Skin color is a very important evolutionary trait. As I'm sure many of you know, skin evolves different pigments to either block out excess solar radiation or to let it in to synthesize vitamin D. Since solar radiation, also known as sunlight, is most concentrated at the equator, populations living here have developed with more melanin in their skin to protect themselves. However, towards the poles, solar radiation drastically decreases. With such mild solar radiation, the body not only doesn't need melanin to protect itself, it also cannot synthesize vitamin D as easily. This is why populations that receive little solar radiation develop light skin. It is also why people with light skin get sunburned easily and can even develop cancer. People with dark skin living in areas of low solar radiation often have low levels of vitamin D. This is why many African Americans are at a greater risk for a vitamin D deficiency. It is pretty amazing when you look at a map of solar radiation across the world and skin color. They are nearly identical. Skin color is determined between two types of melanin, eumelanin and pheomelanin. Eumelanin is a dark brown and black pigment. Pheomelanin is yellow and red in color. More melanin, typically more eumelanin, is effective at blocking out sunlight while low levels of both are effective at synthesizing vitamin D. Everyone has both of these pigments. Skin color is determined by the proportion of how much of these two pigments they have. These pigments create the various skin tones we see in modern humans. The topic of today's video is specifically about white skin and when it appeared in human evolution. Our species, Homo sapiens, first evolved in the Horn of Africa 200 to 300,000 years ago. Since we spent much of our evolution in East Africa, our species always had dark skin. It wouldn't be until after we began to leave Africa that we would begin to develop lighter skin. There is some evidence of extremely early ventures into Europe and Asia over 100,000 years ago but these waves seem to have mostly died out by about 80,000 years ago. The earliest successful migrations of our species out of Africa conquered much of southern Asia and even made it to Australia as early as 60,000 years ago. These populations and others across southern Asia still retain dark skins such as the Adaman Islanders. Waves of humans would continue to move about until we finally ventured into Europe. The first sapiens to truly move into Europe only did so as late as 45,000 years ago. These are the so-called Cro-Magnon humans. But the term Cro-Magnon is not really used in anthropology anymore. It was the name given to five anatomically modern human remains discovered in the 1860s. Originally they were thought to be different enough from us to be considered a subgroup of some kind. However, a century and a half of research has found that they are not sufficiently different from us to deserve a separate designation. The first Europeans are more accurately called the Aurignacian or Proto-Aurignacian people. This is in reference to their tool-making tradition that would last from 43,000 to 26,000 years ago. Anyways, the point of all this is that I need to get rid of the myth that the Cro-Magnon humans were white like later Europeans. They were not. At the time of their discovery, we didn't have DNA evidence, so it was assumed that they were white, and many people still think they are. But in reality, white skin did not develop in Europe until much later. It would take some time for Europe to develop white skin. Not only is evolution quite slow, but the selection pressure may have not been present at first. Like mentioned earlier, Lighter skin has less melanin to block out UV radiation and in turn synthesizes more vitamin D. This is advantageous for some, but for others such as the Inuit, they never had the selective pressure to develop truly white skin. This is because they already get enough vitamin D from their diet. So skin color is not always that simple. If a population lives in an area with less sunlight but has access to a good source of vitamin D, they may never need to develop light skin. Dark skin would just be a little more protection from sunburn in the summer. 
Recent evidence has shown that the earliest Europeans weren't in an evolutionary race to become white. Evidence from the genomes of 83 people found in archaeological sites across Europe have shed light on the emergence of white skin. Genetic evidence from Spain proved that 7,000 years ago Europe was home to blue-eyed but dark-skinned people. And they were not just the tanner versions of the modern inhabitants in Spain. They lacked two genes that are responsible for white-skinned Europeans. But this was in southern Europe, a place that is subjected to some of the highest levels of solar radiation in Europe. It would make sense that these people had dark skin. Farther north, however, we do find evidence of lighter skin. 7,700-year-old remains in southern Sweden show that these people did in fact have both of these white skin genes. They also had a third gene that causes blue eyes and blonde hair. This tells us that some of the genes for light skin unsurprisingly developed in the far north regions of Eurasia. But not all genes came from the north. The first agriculturalists that developed in Europe from the Near East are actually partly responsible for the whitening of Europe. The switch to agriculture may have actually been a dominant force in the evolution of lighter skin. In the food production theory, the cereal-rich diet of Neolithic farmers lacked vitamin D. This in turn would create an evolutionary pressure to develop lighter skin to synthesize vitamin D from the sun. Agriculture originated in the Fertile Crescent around 12,000 years ago, but it would take about 5,000 years to spread throughout Europe. These Near East farmers not only spread to them agriculture, but they also spread to them the two genes for white skin that we previously mentioned. So from about seven to 8,000 years ago onward, Europe became increasingly agricultural. To add to this, white genes from Northern Europe also contributed to the proliferation of white skin. The genes that turned Europe white came from at least three distinct groups, some farmers and some hunter-gatherers. The Europe of 8,000 years ago would have been a diverse place full of many skin, hair, and eye colors. On a trip from Norway to Spain, you could see a menagerie of so-called human races. But despite their skin color, they were all undoubtedly Europeans. I think it is very important for people to understand this because it really puts into perspective our ideas about race. I find it funny to think in an evolutionary blink of an eye, all Nazis had black ancestors. I'm sure they wouldn't enjoy learning about that. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson about skin color and the early times in Europe. After my last video on Neanderthals, I had a lot of people asking me to make a video about Cro-Magnons. But as we learned during this episode, that wouldn't really make any sense. Instead, I am planning on making a probably 20 to 30 minute video on the actual first people of Europe the Aurignacian people. Their technology and culture was fascinating and they made some of my favorite art ever. So make sure to check that video out whenever I finally make it and also comment down below what other ancient culture you'd like to see a video about. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Check out my Instagram and comment some video ideas down below. I make videos about history of humans, ancient animals, and the occasional full-length documentary. If that sounds interesting, check out the over 100 videos I have made. Well, I'll see you on the next episode of North 2. See ya.